you want to learn how to play jazz chords, but you don't know where to start? Well, jazz chords can oftentimes be very confusing, and students oftentimes lack a clear roadmap for what to practice first. Well, in today's lesson, I'm going to remove your confusion once and for all, and I'm going to show you the very first chords that you should be practicing if you want to learn jazz piano. The very first thing that most teachers will tell you if you want to start playing jazz piano is that you need to learn your seventh chords. And this is true, you should learn all of your seventh chords if you want to play jazz, but there is a problem with this. Let's say you're playing a lead sheet, like Fly Me to the Moon, you're gonna see all these seventh chords. And once you learn the chords, you might play the tune like this. The problem here is that when you play seventh chords in their root position form, they can sound very generic and uninspired. However, if you use guide tones, you can take the exact same notes of your seventh chords and make them sound like this. Or the way you look tonight. Here's how it sounds with basic seventh chords. But here it is with guide tones. And here's Girl from Ipanema with basic seventh chords. But here's Girl from Ipanema with guide tones. So seventh chords are very important because they give you the basic building blocks of your chord. However, when it comes to actually playing tunes, playing ordinary seventh chords are not gonna give you the best sound. Instead, I recommend that you start by playing guide tones to get a really nice sound at the piano. But why do I recommend that you use guide tones instead of some other type of chord? Well, there are five reasons. First, they're super easy to play because they're only two notes. Second, they capture the essential jazz notes in your chord. Third, they give you a nice spread out sound for your chords. Fourth, Pro jazz pianists actually use these chords when they're playing. And fifth, and most importantly, they sound great. So I'm gonna teach you how you can start using guide tones in your playing in just eight simple steps. And I encourage you to watch all eight of these steps because if you skip any of these steps, you may not fully understand guide tones and you may struggle to confidently use them in your playing. But before we do this, if you're enjoying the lesson, please hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for more videos just like this. Step one to playing guide tones is to play seventh chords. And seventh chords are very simple. You're basically gonna start with a major chord and you're gonna add one note on top of that, the B. And now I have what's called a C major seven chord. You can easily find the seventh note of a chord by using the major scale, in this case we have C major, and going up seven notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and now we have our C major seven. Step two is to learn your three primary seventh chords. These are the seventh chords that you're gonna see 99% of the time in lead sheets. The first chord is called a major seventh chord, and it's basically a major triad, and we're gonna add one note by going up to the root, the C, and coming down a half step. The second chord is what's called a seventh chord, or you can also call it a dominant seven chord. And it's basically a major chord, except we're gonna add a B flat to the chord. And this note here is gonna be a whole step below the root. The third chord is what's called a minor seven chord. And it's basically a minor triad, and we're gonna add a B flat on the top. So once again, it's a minor triad, and we're adding a note a whole step below the root. Step three is to remove your non-essential notes. And so if you start with your C major seven chord, your non-essential notes are the root and the fifth. Okay, so we're gonna remove those two notes and we end up with the third and the seventh. 
And these two notes are your guide tones, the third and the seventh of the chord. And these are the two notes that actually make the chord sound jazzy. Now you might be thinking, Johnny, why are these two notes the essential notes? Why aren't these two notes the essential notes? Well, the third and the seventh of the chord are the two notes that change the chord quality. And here's what I mean. If you play your C major seven chord, you have your third and your seventh. But if you play your C7 chord or C dominant seven chord, you have a third and a flat seven. And if you play your C minor seventh chord, you have a flat third and a flat seven. In other words, what makes each of these chords unique is the combination of the three and the seven. Notice that in all three of these seventh chords, the root and the fifth stay the same. So it's the third and the seventh that actually differentiate each chord from one another. Also, when you remove the root and the fifth from the chord, you're actually giving a little more weight to the notes that really matter. And so this is why guide tones both sound good and they're so effective if you wanna play jazz. You get some really nice colors without having to add a bunch of other notes to your chords. Now in practice, the guide tones are usually played with a bass player. But if you're playing solo piano, then I do recommend that you add a bass note to kind of lock in each of these guide tones. Step four is to learn your two guide tone voicings. And a voicing is simply the order that you play the notes of a chord on the piano. First, you have what's called an A voicing. And an A voicing is where you play the third of the chord as the bottom note in your right hand. The second voicing is what's called a B voicing. And a B voicing is where we play the seventh of the chord as the bottom note in your right hand. And it's very important to learn both of your voicings for your guide tones because when you're playing chord progressions, you're gonna end up using both of these voicings depending on where your right hand is on the piano. By the way, I also wanna mention that when you play a root note with a guide tone, this is also called a chord shell. And a chord shell is basically a partial chord. So in the case of guide tones, we're taking our C major seven and we're removing the root and the fifth. I am adding the root on the bottom, but it's a partial chord. There's no fifth in the chord. So you could also call these guide tone chords chord shells. All right, step four is to play your guide tones on your other two primary chords. And I just taught you how to play guide tones on a C major seven, but what about your other two chords? Well, you have a C seven or a C dominant seven. So how would you play your guide tones for this? Well, we're gonna remove the root and the fifth. Here are the guide tones. Let's put them up here and let's put a little root in on the bottom to lock it in. And here's our A voicing. Then for the B voicing, we're gonna put the seventh on the bottom, and here's our B voicing. Same with C minor seven. Recall we had this chord earlier. How do you play your guide tones? Remove the root and the fifth. There are the guide tones. We're gonna to play them up here, add the root on the bottom, lock it in. That's our A voicing. And then you also have your B voicing, which will be here. I also wanna mention the best range to play guide tones because you don't wanna play these chords really low, okay, too muddy. You don't wanna play them too high, okay, because they're too bright. The best range for guide tones is the mid range of the piano. And so I recommend that you go no lower than a C3 and no higher than a C5. All right, step five is to practice guide tones on common jazz chord progressions. And the most common jazz chord progression is what's called the two, five, one. It sounds amazing. And it's used on tons of tunes. So we'll start with the basic seventh chords. They are D minor seven, G dominant seven, and C major seven, and then I also like to throw in a little C6 as a substitute chord at the end of the chord progression. All right, let's go ahead and strip out the non-essential notes. So D minor seven, here are the guide tones. G7, here are our guide tones. And our C major seven, here are the guide tones. 
And then for the C6 chord, you can use these two notes as a sort of substitute for your guide tones. Next, you want these chords to be as close together as possible because you don't want to have to jump to your chords like this. And so what I recommend that you do is that on the second chord, you use an inversion of your guide tones, meaning I recommend that you use the B voicing for your G7 chord. So now we have our D minor seven guide tones going to our G7 guide tones. It's super close. And then our C major seven guide tones are super close. And then we play the C six like this. All right, let's play these chords in the right hand and add the bass note to lock it in. Here's D minor seven, G seven, C major seven, and our C six. All right, before I teach you step six, if you wanna do a deep dive on guide tones and you really wanna understand how to use them in your piano playing, I recommend that you check out our level five foundations learning track over at pianowithjohnny.com. In this learning track, you'll learn everything that you need to know about chord shells and guide tones. One of the best courses for this is our exercises course, where we take you through all of the keys with some really fun exercises, and then I show you how how to use chord shells and guide tones on the top eight chord progressions in lead sheets. So you really know how to use these on tunes and you also learn some other really cool things in this learning track, like how to use piano chord extensions and chord alterations. These are the notes that pro jazz musicians add to their chords to make their chords sound really rich and full. So I'll put a link to this learning track below. All right, step six is to learn the three formats that I recommend you use to get started playing guide tones. And the first is when you're playing a piano accompaniment and perhaps you're singing a jazz tune, well, you can use guide tones in your accompaniment. For example, let's say you're playing Fly Me to the Moon. Well, you can use guide tones like this. Fly me to the moon and let me play among the stars. For this approach, I'm taking my guide tones for each chord and I'm laying down a very simple bass line, okay? D minor, okay? G7, and C major seven. And then I go to a quick C7. Or let's say you're playing Fly Me to the Moon on the piano. Well, you can use these exact same guide tones to harmonize your melody. And this is what I call the stationary approach, or you could call it the chord shell approach. So now I have those guide tones under my melody. You see that? So there's the guide tones and then D minor, there's the guide tones, and then we have, there's the guide tones, and then on the E, we have our guide tones, okay? And then we go to a quick C7. The third format that I recommend using guide tones is what I call the jumping sound. It's also called a stride left hand, and it sounds like this. So we have, D minor, G7, and then C7, like that. By the way, I wanted to mention that the lesson sheet music is downloadable and printable. You can also change the key of this entire lesson with the click of one button with our smart sheet music. So I'll put a link to all of that below. All right, two more steps to go and then you can start using guide tones in your playing. In step seven, you're gonna learn an essential guide tone exercise. And if you really wanna be confident using guide tones on any lead sheet, it's essential to work through this exercise because it's gonna take you through all 12 of your keys practicing guide tones. The exercise is very simple. We're gonna practice the two, five, one chord progression that I taught you earlier but we're gonna cycle through all 12 keys. And the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna start in the key of C major, two, five, one, and then we're gonna go down a whole step to the key of B flat major, okay? So now we're gonna do a two chord in the key of B flat, and then a five chord in the key of B flat, and a one chord in the key of B 
flat, okay? Now, if the theory is going over your head, don't worry, it will make sense. And actually, the exercise is super simple to play. I just want you to understand the concept behind it so that you know what you're playing. So the exercise goes like this. We're gonna play a two chord in the key of C, that's our D minor seven. Five chord is the G seven, there's the guide tones. And then the one chord is my C major seven, okay? Now, I'm gonna do two, five, one in B flat. So I'm gonna make this a C minor seven. Two, and now the five, and now the one in B flat, okay? Now from here, it's getting kind of low. So we're gonna take it up here and we're gonna do a two, five, one in the key of a flat. So we shift these down and do the same pattern. And now we're in the key of A flat, okay? And now the same pattern. We're gonna do two, five, one to G flat. So we have two, five, one. Does that make sense? So you're really following a pattern here, okay? Now we're in the key of E. It's a two chord, a five chord, and a one chord, okay? And then we're gonna end on our D in the key of D. So we have two, five, one, and now we're back to where we started. Now we just cycled through six keys, the key of C, B flat, A flat, G flat, E, and D. But there's six other keys to practice. So you're gonna do the same exact exercise, but now you're gonna start in the key of D flat, okay? So the two chord is an E flat minor seven. So there's the two, here's the five, and here's the one. Makes sense? And now we go to the key of B. Two, five, one. And let's bring it up because it's getting kind of muddy. So we have two, five, one. That's the key of A. Now the key of G. Two, five, one. Key of F. Two, five, one. And finally key of E flat. Two, five, one. And we're back to where we started. You can also practice this same exercise by jumping from the root up to the guide tones. And this is an important exercise if you wanna play tunes and you wanna practice jumping from the root to the chord. So as a quick example, you could go two, five, one. And now do it in B flat. Two, five, one, and you continue the cycle, two, five, one. Okay, and it's also starting to get kind of muddy, so I do encourage you to bring it up once you get past that C. This is C3, you could bring it up, two, five, one. All right, congratulations, you made it to the final step. This is step number eight. And in this step, you're gonna learn how to use guide tones on a common lead sheet. And we're gonna work through the A section of Fly Me to the Moon. So how do you use guide tones on this tune? Well, first, go through each basic seventh chord and figure out your guide tones. So A minor seven, here are the guide tones. D minor seven, here are the guide tones. G seven, there's the guide tones. Uh, C7, right, guide tones. So just work through each chord. F major seven, guide tones. B minor seven, flat five. This is a different chord. Here are your guide tones. And E7 is the guide tones. And A minor seven are the guide tones. Next, you want each of your guide tones to be as close together as possible so that you get some nice voice leading between your chords. So let's look at the first chord, A minor seven guide tones. It's kind of low, so let's bring it up. We're gonna start here for the guide tones. Then the D minor seven, super close by. G seven, let's use the inverted guide tones. So this has the seventh on the bottom. It's a B voicing. Then the C chord, that's an A voicing because the third's on the bottom. F major guide tones, it's a B voicing. The B minor seven flat five, that's an A voicing. E seven, that's a B voicing. It's getting a little low here, but it's okay. We'll go to A minor seven and we'll end there. The final step is to use your guide tones to harmonize your melody. And you could use the stationary approach. this, right? You see what I'm doing? Or you could jump to your chords in the left hand, which has a really nice sound with the melody. So here's how it goes. 
D minor 7, G7, C7, F major 7, B minor 7 flat 5, E7, and A minor 7. Hey, thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, please leave a comment. Also, be sure to check out pianowithjohnny.com. We have the complete online learning platform to learn everything that you would need to know to play jazz piano. So I'll put a link to that below, and I'll see you in the next video.